Hi, and welcome back to Tucker How. My name's Holt, and I've been working on the grounds here for over six years. And today I'd like you to join me as we talk about a couple of the key geographical features that have made this land noteworthy, as well as a few of the plants that had a significant influence on not only the native peoples that lived here, but also the settlers who colonized. Tuckahoe Plantation is located in central Virginia, along the James River, just outside of Richmond. Here we are on the edge of the Piedmont, which is a plateau region that stretches down the eastern U.S. It sits between the Atlantic Coastal Plain and the Blue Ridge Mountains. This edge, where the Piedmont meets the coastal plain, is called the Fall Line, since the land literally drops to a lower elevation as we get to the coastal plain. Often rivers and streams turn to waterfalls and rapids along this line. Cities like Richmond and Philadelphia, as well as many trading posts, were developed along the Fall Line as well, since this is the furthest inland large cargo ships could go. Soils in the Piedmont are generally clay-like and moderately fertile. If you've ever tried to establish a garden in the Piedmont, you're probably well familiar with Virginia red clay. While this clay is very useful for making things like bricks, it can present some challenges for growing plants. However, along a river like the James, you'll sometimes encounter fertile floodplains like the one you see behind me. What happens is that during a flood, nutrients from the river wash up onto the land and they remain there even after the floodwaters subside. The result is much more fertile land for crops to grow in. This would have been a particularly interesting feature for a landowner who's looking to grow a crop like tobacco. Tobacco is a very hungry plant and quickly depletes the nutrients of the land that it's planted in. Typically, you can't plant tobacco in the same place for more than two years in a row. But on a fertile floodplain like this, it could potentially extend the period of time you can grow a crop. The economy in the colonies was dependent upon agriculture, the business of farming cash crops like tobacco, cotton, and later wheat. Farming, especially without modern equipment, is incredibly labor-intensive. And to keep this kind of economy going, Many Africans were captured, enslaved, and forced to work without pay. It was this inexpensive form of labor that could allow a wealthy landowner to become even more wealthy. I have here a bag of Virginia Gold Tobacco Seed, which is a very appropriate name. Tobacco was so valuable in the colonial era that it could be used as money. One could barter with their tobacco in exchange for goods and services. A bag of tobacco seed like this plus the land and the labor required to turn it into a crop could make a man his fortune. It was the Powhatan Indians from the coastal plain that introduced the first settlers to their tobacco, but it was strong and too harsh for the settlers. It was John Rolfe that ended up blending that tobacco with another kind of tobacco from the Caribbean, and this new tobacco ended up being the major cash crop of the colonies. When the first settlers were arriving in Jamestown in the early 1600s, the upper waters of the James River, where we are now, was controlled primarily by the Monacan Nation. Originally, the Monacan's territory covered roughly half of the state of Virginia, including most of the Piedmont region, as well as portions of the Blue Ridge Mountains and Shenandoah Valley. The Monacan culture in this area dates back 10,000 years. They're one of the oldest groups of indigenous people that still exist in their ancestral homeland, and they're the only Eastern Sioux in the state. As members of the Sioux, the Monacans speak a dialect of the Siouan language. However, the word Tuckahoe is derived from an Eastern Algonquian word. It's a variety of arrowroot plant that thrives in this region here. Algonquian was spoken primarily in the coastal plains, or the Tidewater region as some call it. The Powhatan Indians were members of this group. The root of the Tuckahoe plant was a food source, but it needed to be cooked for many hours before being eaten to get rid of its natural toxins. Often, the roots were buried in the ground with a large fire built on top to slow cook them for a day or even more, then they could be dried and ground into flour. The fact that the Randolphs who settled here named their land after this plant suggests that it was significant to them for some reason, whether it got them through a time of famine or whether it was just prolific in the area when they arrived, we're not sure. But it is interesting, though, that they chose to use the Algonquian word for this plant rather than the Siouan, which would have been the language of the native peoples in the area. As I mentioned, Tuckahoe is built along the James River. From here where we stand, I can see the James just there in the distance. 
As colonists started moving westward, further into the interior of the country, it was along rivers like the James that they first began to establish themselves. Roads were very expensive and very difficult to build, and waterways already existed. Because of that, waterways became the major highways in colonial Virginia. Many significant houses like Tuckahoe were built along rivers like this, and that's why Tuckahoe's front entrance faces south toward the James. Once the Kanawha Canal was established this far by 1814, it provided much more reliable, safer transportation up and down the James. The canal project was first proposed by George Washington and work began on it in the late 1700s. But work was slow. Everything had to be hand dug since they didn't have access to modern digging equipment. In fact, many of the enslaved people who lived here at Tuckahoe had a hand in building the canal, as the Randolphs who owned the land leased out their labor for the project. By the mid-1800s, about 1850, work on the canal was only half completed when it stopped permanently. By that point, trains were a much more productive means of transportation. And eventually, the canal was filled in and tracks were established along the towpath of the canal. By that point, trains took over the job of transporting people and goods like coal and tobacco up and down the James. Tuckahoe was a stop along that line and the train platform is likely not far from where we're standing now. Thank you for joining me on the Bank of the James today. And I hope this has given you a deeper appreciation for why certain geographical features and certain plants have had such a heavy influence on the development of this region over the centuries.